Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. December 17th, 2023. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And I created a monster, which makes me Gary. <laughs> Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. Welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the Bear Podcast of Indeterminate Length, episode number 722. A lot of numbers on that. I feel all old. <laughs> well some of us will feel that way hey uh hi tony waves back in the chat um yeah so for those of you that that aren't patrons and didn't catch the pre-show then you don't even understand what just happened with jeff and why i said what i said but perhaps you should become a patron yeah all right so, uh, for those that don't know, we did have a show planned. Things change. We're flexible that way. We modify. We bend. I mean, there's a reason why Gary's wearing that shirt. Yes. Might be a little promotion. Might also be a little false advertising. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I can bend this way, and that is it. <laughs> <laughs> Total sidebar. I went to the laundromat this morning, as I usually do early in the morning, because there's not really a crowd. And there was this older gentleman that was there, and he kept talking about how he couldn't bend over to pick things up off the ground because he'd fall over and then he'd never get up. And it was just so amusing because then it turns into him and this other like mm. older gentleman who were like out out senior rightus each other. Like I don't even know. Like I just made up a word. Like they were both like going over their ailments and their age and like and you know outdoing each other. It was wild. I was like, okay. Oh Lord. I guess that's a thing. I guess that's a thing. I don't know. It's that. So as the year is wrapping up, uh taking a look back on milestones and notable things that happened in 2023. Um because in a couple of weeks, kids, this year's over. That's it. That's all she wrote. Yeah. And then it'll be weeks. 2024. Two weeks in a day? Yeah. Yeah. Two weeks from today is New Year's Eve. I have mixed yeah. feelings about this. Oh. You're probably not the only one. I'm not I'm not happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's not necessarily that I'm not happy about it. It's it's more of a mixed feelings of whether I'm like fuck off 2023 or eh, you were you're an okay year. Mm. Well, I, I mean, it, this, so that's the thing of, about a look back, right? Is like what what were the things that stood out in the course of this year? Um, presuming things are memorable. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't, I, I don't know if there was a whole lot that like was significant per se. I mean, are you thinking about na nationally, globally, or personally? Uh, all of the above, like in terms mm. of the podcast and like what we did this particular year and, um, like it's it's ironic to me that my big travel was over a year ago. Like that's the thing that stands out to me. It's probably because I also got COVID then. Um, <laughs> so, like, I didn't really do any travel per se this year. Um, 
I mean, I, I, I drove around a whole bunch, you know, and, and a lot of, like, I worked a lot this year. Mm-hmm. There's that. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to be that guy, but like 2023 was a pretty awesome year for me. Um, that's no, that's, you know, that's good. I'm, I'm yeah, very happy. Yeah. That it was good for you. Yeah. I, I just you finally made it goddamn that's legal. Fun. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. This happened. <laughs> yes. Yeah, this, this thing happened where, um, I finally put a ring on it. Are we finally, I don't know, whatever. Um, yeah. So, um, the, the wedding happened. The marriage has always been there. The legal marriage, wedding, what have you, is what actually happened in 2023. And that I am... You were you were common law married. Yes. Now we're legally married. I have the, the certificate and everything in the office. In the... <laughs> Sorry, that just cracked me up because you kind of like gestured a reference, like <laughs> like motherfuckers. I got I got a document. Like, yes. like don't tested me. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah, but that was that was a pretty wonderful, significant thing um, that happened for us. And it's weird when I think about it, mostly because um. We've had friends like we actually we were just at dinner with um, our um, friend who um, was our officiant, um, Marla, mm-hmm. and um, they were asking us, you know, you know how how are things? How have things been? And how you know since getting married? Because we hadn't seen we haven't really seen them since then. And Jim and I kind of looked at each other and talk, like thought about it. And we're like, yeah, it's it was while it was a wonderful great thing it didn't change anything per se <laughs> it, it, it you know as you were hinting at gary like we we've been and jeff we've we've been together we've been married we just haven't officially done it so it was this like we literally got married and then two days later we um uh had the um i think that's when we had the um, talk with the um, HVAC guy and agreed to get the HVAC updated. Like it, it was a it was a normal day. It feels weird. It was a special day, but once it was done, it was like okay, and back to what we've been doing for the past seven, well, twenty years really. But like specifically at that point in time to pass like eight years living together. Right. So yeah. So it's a milestone and yet yes. things aren't really all that different. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Which in some that. sense isn't that how it should be. I would I mean if there's a relationship that's been there to me it feels like if there's a relationship there that's been there that's been established and is already pretty amazing and powerful the the wedding is just a yeah a formality now was it a great time yes i really did enjoy it i really i think you know people that came and enjoyed it enjoyed it um it was not as um well less no that's not true i was gonna say it wasn't stressful no it was um (laughs) um it was a opportunity um actually i've just been i've been looking at pictures because we're making a picture book for my mother um uh it was a wonderful opportunity to celebrate what we've had in front of friends and family Mm -hmm. Um, where for us in a lot of ways hadn't really been the case. Um, If that makes sense. Like um, Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't mention this and I'm about to get emotional right now. Uh, um, The fact that my mother was there and was from like the Saturday when we had dinner um, 
to the wedding itself. Um, and even before that, but have been very supportive and um, had always been um, respectful and loving to me. Um, seeing her there um, was the highlight for me. And I know mm -hmm. that feels weird, but um, the fact that she was there and my brother was there, my sister-in-law were there, was um, quite a wonderful feeling to have. Because I don't, I don't know if, I don't know. I don't want to say if we had done this 10 years ago, it wouldn't have been possible. I don't, I don't think that would have been the case. I think I still would have had that support and love there. But for me, getting to that point was years of conflict and not being sure and hiding something that meant a lot to me. And being able to share that officially with her and my mm -hmm. family was great. So it's, you, you needed them there to help you overcome your fear of what, of the, the acceptance. You, want, you wanted essentially proof of the acceptance and love they have for you. And they gave it to you. Yes, very much so. Whew. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Anyway. No, I mean, I think it's important that you recognize, Damon, you know, the significance of that, because honestly, I'll say this, you know, in all the years that we've known each other, I imagine that you and Jim would get married one day. But a part of me did think a number of years ago that it would be after all of the parents were gone, mm. because sometimes that's that's a factor in people's lives that that to them, they. I don't want to say they're avoiding conflict or stress. They just realize now it's not the time. Yeah. And they wait. And I think we all make those decisions in our own time and space, you know? Agreed. It was a, um, it's again, I'm thinking back and I'm realizing like I was at Thanksgiving just this, um, past month, last month. And, um, I had cousins who, were aware that I hadn't invited specific people, family members, because I wasn't sure how they would react. Mm -hmm. um, that were being, um, the words just of my head, um, trying to be respectful of that feeling and not um, talking too much about it. Um, because I remember I came in and my cousin who I invite, one of my cousins who I invited to the wedding um, was, was like started asking me about it. And his wife um, kind of politely, but kind of like sister him a little bit. And his sister kind of did the same thing because they kind of knew that their father was one of the people that I didn't invite. Oh. Um, and, uh, but in that same vein, in the other room, my mother is talking to my aunt, who I didn't I didn't necessarily invite to wedding, not because of fear or anything. We just haven't had that strong of a relationship. She's been sort of absent from the family for a while. Mm -hmm. um, but talking to her about me being married, getting married, and all of that stuff, kind of like kept, like just like normal chit chat among family members who are catching up after you know years apart. She was just sort of mentioning it in passing, right. um, not thinking anything negative about it. Just oh, my son got married, and his you know her, his you know, husband is now you know and all this stuff. Kind of just like having that conversation right. about it without it being a. Uh, um, Speaking with it with the respect and pride that you would do, like she did with her, my brother, her other son, when he got married to his mm -hmm. wife. So right. it just, you know, it made me feel good. And I, and I think that that's a thing that sometimes we we don't consider is that I remember years ago, my mother told me that she was talking with my grandmother about me being gay. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> I was like, why would you even discuss that? Mom's like, oh, it just kind of came up in conversation. I was like, how does that come up in conversation? 
And she's like, well, it, it, she's like, it's not a big deal. And I was like, are you sure? I was like, because I haven't said anything on purpose because I've been trying to like, mm-hmm. you know, keep to the middle lane basically and not yeah. do anything. And you froze, Gary. Anything to say? Driving somewhere together. Hello? Yes. Yes. Kind of. There you go. Internet Maybe. has recovered. <laughs> Maybe? Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I guess they were just driving somewhere, and my mother, I don't know, my grandmother asked how I was doing, and my mother, I don't know. It just, like, and my mother was completely in this mindset and describing it as, like, not a big deal. Yeah. Like, it was just a conversation. Mm-hmm. And so what you, that made me think of that because you were saying how your mom, like, to her, she would talk about it like she would talk about her other children. Like, yeah. you know, and, and, and I think that's one of the better things about having either family or friends. And we haven't really used this term a lot, but we probably will be in the, in the coming year, coming years, you know, about what al- that's what allyship is, mm-hmm. is just talking about things as matter of fact and not making a big deal of it. Right. And people learning and recognizing like it isn't a big deal. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So no, it makes sense. Like that was a, you know, a big milestone. For milestone. You. Yes, indeed. It was and you milestone. had another one. Yeah. Yeah. Not two months later. Well, yeah. Two months later. Uh, um... <laughs> <laughs> so for I... those that don't know, Sorry, I don't mean to, I don't mean to interrupt you. Go for it. That was a horrible parody of a really bad meme. Anyways, um, <laughs> <laughs> for those that don't know, Damon and Jim adopted. <laughs> no, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> If the, these Anybody two knows? had had any kids, it would be fur babies, I'm sure. If they did, no, they, they did. no. Anybody that knows knows this podcast knows them. They swallow all of them. No big deal. <laughs> so, actually, <laughs> we, don't. we don't swallow. Well, you heard it here it's, first, kids. It's it's one of the rules. <laughs> okay. No, um, you had the contest. Yes. Yeah, so but not two months after the, the, um, the wedding, I competed in Cincinnati Leather um, and won um, and did it in a way that only I could, which is it wasn't just me. It was an unprecedented tie where, which I've never heard of happening before. Mm-hmm. And someone who has tally master contest and all that stuff before it doesn't happen. Um, but we tied all the way around, and they decided to award the title to both of us. So me and Trela, um, who will be on the show in the near future, um, um, and I are now joint title holders, twinners, whichever word you want to use, um, for Cincinnati Leather, um, and have been representing and then being ambassadors for the city um the region technically for um that title for this year so um that's been pretty amazing um i i wouldn't say i wasn't expecting it because i don't do things like i don't do things like that without expecting to win Mm -hmm. um but i think the way that it has happened and the fact that Trela and I get along so well, I think has made it all the more just wonderful. Mm -hmm. Um, Again, we'll get more into it later, but um, I think we both came into the contest with a level of respect for each other and I think both of us were like, we would have been fine, you know, have the cards dealt one way or the other, not straight down the middle as it happened this time. But like if she, if they had won, 
and I hadn't, I would have been fine with it. And I think they would have been the same way if I had won and they hadn't. So that kind of made it all the more wonderful. Yeah, I mean, I think that's fair. And we're looking forward to having them on and interviewing and talking with both of you about what that experience has been like in that case. Um, yeah, I mean, I feel like, I mean, I know for Jeff, you had a, the job change situation for uh, a few the, times. the position. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. Really? Yeah. Yeah, so here, here's my journey in my job. So last year I got promoted near the beginning of the year i think of 2022 i got promoted to be be a trainer right and uh, as we returned to office i helped get people into the office and then train them at in in certain position i made some documentation as part of some meetings got a very important place had a great team i was working with very very happy then they're like hey this workflow is having some issues we need a dedicated trainer firm and they moved me over there and it was bored out of my mind and that was at the beginning of this year mm. then i think uh, oh no no it was the month before my my birthday month before my birthday majority of the group got pulled uh, of the the team of over a hundred people, I think, mm-hmm. got pulled into a meeting and said, "You're being like a from from this this flow. We'll see if we can find you another project to to attend to because we're a contractor, right? So we're not being fired. It's just this. They're down basically downsizing the group from this contractor." down to one workflow so all these other people were being let go from the project right most of those people because of the company we work for us this is an odd project Mm -hmm. so the qualifications for the projects that our company has for most of the people um probably not going to be able to find something and probably be end up being let go from the company. Mm. I don't know where they went. What happened? Some people might have gotten other positions. I don't know. But then the mere two, three days before my last day, I pulled into a meeting with uh, my manager and he said, hey, do you, do you want to come over to this other workflow and need people? <laughs> And that's still here. Everything continues as normal. Different thing. You're not going to be a trainer, but hey, right. at least the pay never changes when you change the workflows. Once they have you at a tier, you're you're there unless they promote you. Everything goes up, right? Never down. Well, that's good. Said, hey, uh, if we do well and by this time, there will be an extra bonus. And I'm like, ooh, neato. And so came to that and found out that there's basically no training. Dope. Uh, so it's a, you're going to have to muddle through. Here's some documentation. Here's a little bit of idea of what we're supposed to do. Figure it out. Yeah. So it's a slow roll getting up to speed with with this new workflow. I'm hoping that eventually as more stuff comes across my plate, I do it. I'll get used to it, understand it more. And then eventually, hopefully, be able to put things together and basically set, put, make a training plan for them, basically taking my training experience, help creating, create a 
training workflow to help people understand that if for some reason somebody leaves, we need to bring somebody else on, we can onboard them and they won't have mm -hmm. the problem that I'm having right now. It's uh, actually so, a, a good positive viewpoint because some other people would be like, well, I went through hell. You get to go through hell too. No. <laughs> No, I'm one of those people who's like, I want to make this better. And plus, this is things I like to do. So, and especially uh -huh. because because of the, the role we have, there actually is a bunch of downtime. We're still kind of actively doing some monitoring of some things, but sometimes nothing is happening. Uh -huh. So, it could be very, very boring. Uh -huh. But no. hopefully, but if we can get people, at least allow people to understand what it is, even if we're, we have a lot of downtime, when it's go time, because it's when those, like, something happens, we need to go, 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 go. We have to react really quickly. So once it's go time, we can get on, onto it. So that if I can at least get it to a point where I'm easily able to do that, okay, can jump on a few things. And uh, there was a couple other things which I'm assuming are like higher tier stuff or something. Mm -hmm. Later on, then great. But provide, but in the end, what I'm hoping for is really get a sense and get into the workflow so that I can be knowledgeable enough that I can move this over into some sort of more structured training and we can get everybody aligned and everything working. I think the rest of the team who's actually been doing this longer than I've been on the team, they started before. That uh, I, th I think they're online, but for some reason it's not flowing. The information isn't successfully flowing to me. It's like everybody's just doing the job and nobody's really trying to right. actively train. Right. So, and when when I was supposed to do shadowing, nothing was happening. So there was something to do. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> so uh, there was there's a lot of problems with the onboarding and, and training part. Yeah. Yes. In addition, and this is a just this past week, so you guys probably didn't know. My car broke down. Oh no. Wednesday, my first day of my work week. Go out to my car. Shunk 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 shunk. Shunk 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 shunk. Mm-hmm. Shunk, 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 shunk. The car went start. So I called in saying, no, oh, I got a problem with my car. And I won't be able to make it in today. Um, told AAA. Ended up getting it towed to, to, to the shop. You tell me, okay, it's going to be probably like um, 120 bucks for diagnosis and then whatever the repairs are. Uh, they figured it out. Said the bill is about $405 for, because of some sort of bad sensor. I think I have my, my seat. And I'm like, well, shit. Took a quick look at my bank account, and make sure I had, I had buffer funds. Uh, and I'm like, great. Um, they got that fixed, and then uh, I went in yesterday. Or, or yesterday, yeah. So it took them a couple of days to get fixed. So they actually mm -hmm. fixed, got it fixed on Friday. Called me up. But uh, by the time they called was the end of their work day. So I said, you can come by and pick it up tomorrow. We're here till, till two. So no big deal. Got a lift. Lift there. Uh, and 
then I found out they didn't charge me for the diagnosis. They're like, oh, we figured it out pretty quickly. It's, it wasn't worth the time to, to really charge you for it. Like, we didn't do much. <laughs> well, that's, Yay. that's nice. So, so we just charge you for the repair. It's, it's, Shout out to them. Yeah. Uh, also, because I have AAA, got a little bit of a discount on that. And then it says, hey, did, did you want an oil change? <laughs> I noticed Please. the thing said, said you that you're you're overdue for an oil change. I'm like, yeah. Can it, by any chance can I also like throw an inspection there too? I'm not sure if you do that here. <laughs> hey, yeah, sure. You so, know what? While we're here, since if we're you here, just, right? Well, do an usually, oil change, usually, a tire if I'm going an inspection, um, replace the air filter. Uh, let's take care of the AC. Like the Freon, like just just live it up. Like if you're not charging me for this and it's not costing that much, like <laughs> and I got a discount. Like <laughs> sorry, Jeff. I'm just making fun because I'm like next thing no, I know, no, no. No, he's no, got no. like twelve surfaces. And, no, you know. he 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 just he, it, no he he offered the oil change. That's it. Nothing more. Yeah. Just hey, did you want right. an oil change? And it was very much given to me like you don't have to accept this. <laughs> It wasn't like he was, you really need to do an oil change. It was like, like, hey, I know this is, did, did you want to do it? Like, I mean, did you want to do it? I'm like, oh, if you offer that service, I'm like, yeah, sure. And then I suggested, hey, do you have an inspection? I know I need to do one. It, that's due as well. Hmm. Uh, so got all that done. Car's working uh, fine now, but they did notice that there was some, um, cracking on my front tire so they need to get replaced soon it wasn't an immediate thing so he he right. said i can look it up but you're because of the type of car it should be relatively cheap i'm definitely using the term relatively cheap <laughs> tires are fucking expensive yeah end of story tires yeah. are not cheap yeah, but I mean, like, compared to, like, if I had, like, a Ford F-150. I don't have a Ford F-150. I have a little hatchback. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the tires are much smaller. Right. So that's why it's relatively cheap. Uh, so okay. he, he said he just recommended it. It was more of making you aware of this information. Do with it as you will. Um, so I may be seeing in the near future at least getting the front tires replaced. He said the back tires were pretty good. Were, were okay for a while. So it might be one of those things where I'll do the front tires and then a little bit later down the line, do the back tires. That's fair. So because of the the, the cracking on the the front tires um i it's my anxiety i think has been spiking again i don't mm -hmm. know something this past month or so uh i've just been more anxious about things so mentally um i haven't really been doing that great so uh, that's why I'm like 2023. Uh, I still have a job. I've been getting back to the wow. I've been, you know, nothing major has really happened. Just, well, I suppose a few major things have happened, but um, a lot of, a lot has changed during 2023. Um, not necessarily for the better, but also not necessarily for the worse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but uh, hopefully in 2024, I will help better myself a little more. Um, oh, uh, also another big milestone. I had all my teeth removed. <laughs> right. We yeah. know that was something you were completely looking forward to having done. I say with sarcasm. Yeah, it was more of like, yeah, this is probably what's going to happen. 
so I've been on the denture train, and uh, I think probably at the beginning of the year I'm gonna do another. One thing that's been another thing that's been difficult is just getting the energy to just call in to get another alignment. They said it couldn't take up to a year for everything to heal properly to get to the permanent denture. So, mm. uh, but if anything, over the past few months i've been getting into burgers in fact <laughs> on my way home from from the shop i got a burger king double cheeseburger Ooh. Try that out. see how that looks that goes i've been just like going around finding burgers that i can eat mm. oh, gosh. And it was successful i think it, my default for for uh fast food burgers is is just a double cheeseburger just regular plain ordinary no lettuce no tomatoes pickles fine but very i think basic. for now just trying to keep it simple so that you can kind of still get used to things is is fair and across the board that's correct i think the exception of a few places that's sort of a standard. Like you'll get like two patties, two pieces of cheese, a bun, some condiments, yeah. maybe and a little I'm something at, else. When I'm at, at McDonald's, I can't order the McDouble. I need to order the double cheeseburger. Two yes. different things. Yeah. Because the McDouble is basically the double cheeseburger, but with one less slice of cheese. Yes. Yes, it is. Um, and the, Chicken sandwiches are a no-no though. I mean, like I can do like them. them. It's just not great. Like, like the, like the, like a mech chicken, for example. Uh, like a mech chicken, yeah. Like a mech chicken, interesting. It's the, okay, but that uh, makes sense. It's the breading is too hard. Yeah, depending on what it, you're eating, yeah, that makes sense. I was starting to think. I was like, it shouldn't be that hard, but then I realized it could be, depending on it, the it's sandwich. About the, like, it's more about the bread yeah, than it is yeah. anything else, but. Yeah. Huh. Good to know. But, but I've tried that. So I've been experimenting with food. I had sloppy joes last mm. week, which I made myself. Sloppy joes. Sloppy, sloppy joes. And I prefer the the like the McCormick seasoning packet version of um, sloppy joes mm -hmm. because that's with like. A 15 ounce can of uh, tomato sauce or a five ounce can of tomato paste and water. Um, and it's very tomato y. Well, I've seen some mm -hmm. sloppy joes which are much less. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Right. <sighs> well, but Gary. It's it's yeah. What about um, you? Work was a challenge this year. Um, the main job, I should say. The part-time job, I ended up switching projects that I work on uh, towards the... It Was it in the summer that changed on me? We we still have the client, but the client was changing their operational hours for coverage. Mm. And so they didn't really need evenings. So mm. I kind of got booted um, <laughs> to go back to the project that I worked on when I started with the company full-time years ago. Um, which actually is fine. It, it's ironic because I was, I was uh, going through the whole like I don't like change, like you know thing <laughs> I because like I was like ah! like I was really bent out of shape about like learning relearning the other thing, and mm -hmm. now it's funny because so the old thing was very in depth and pretty complex, mm -hmm. but I had you know I had, I enjoyed that because everything was very different. So like every circumstance that you had to problem solve and troubleshoot was like a whole new thing, right. And then this thing is pretty repetitive, but 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 much quicker, shorter, doesn't necessarily take as long. Mm -hmm. um, and because of that, they expanded my knowledge from just one area focus to, I think, seven. Okay. So there's that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's been that's been pretty interesting. And then recently they sent me a whole new computer. Because I've been using my home computer and I was having problems with their VPN to get connected to a system. 
And after months of troubleshooting and trying to work with the local uh, broadband um, fiber optic company, their their help desk, ultimately, they were like, we just think it's your PC. And I was like, that's insane. Um, because I didn't do it because it used to work. And then it just stopped and I, I didn't do anything to make it not work. Right. So then they sent me a, a work computer. So, yeah, that was a whole thing. Yay. Um, went to three concerts this year. Haven't been to concerts yes. in decades. Yes, I was going to ask about that. Yeah, so that was a whole thing. In fact, it's funny because some people didn't know I went to some concerts, and they found out recently, and they were like, you saw Pink? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, oh, my God. And then they're like, you saw Queen? And I was like, I did. <laughs> they're like, my God, like, you just really, like, lived it up. And then I saw Tepesh Mode. And, then, like, so very much um, had, a whole, had a series of uh, that kind of, like, live entertainment adventures. And I guess... Right. Because of COVID and 2020, like, I, I just didn't really reconsider going to see things in, like, big mass public kind of areas. I think I think in my mind, I had just adjusted to the new quote-unquote normal. Right. Which is where I just don't go around <laughs> a lot of people to do things because mm -hmm. why would I? Um, which is makes sense when you think about it because yeah. um, we, we're – with the chorus, we're dealing with a very similar – situation with audience and people coming and experiencing us again where um after especially after COVID we went online for during COVID we went online for a year mm -hmm. and we had these really great audiences virtually and then we went back to like in-person concerts and it was like and oh look here are all the the here's a little bit of audience. They still came, but not nearly as many. And then there was all the rules and regulations because of masking and everything. Um, and this past a week or so ago, um, we had our last, our most recent concert, and we had the highest numbers we've had in years. Oh, so good. So it's kind of an amazing feeling. Uh, but I think it's like you're saying, it's part of that people are getting adjusting, either from or away from their, that that normal that was for a couple of years to maybe venturing out more, which is, a pre, I'm, I think people who are in the arts are very appreciative, you know, from the high end, like performers and musicians and theaters and Broadway and what have you to the, the little concert, the little um, gay men's chorus kind of thing. Agreed. No, I, yeah, I think that's fair. Um, I'm trying to think if there was really much of anything else. I mean, it's so strange because I feel like a lot of this year blended together. Mm. And so it's challenging to like pull out distinct things. Right. Um, recently, we had our World AIDS Day um, memorial event that I helped coordinate, put together and uh, hosted. And I got some compliments on how well that went. Um, which was nice. And it's not that I don't get compliments, but I guess it just really stands out as interesting that some people really felt that, like, they wanted to be certain that I got the recognition. Um, mm -hmm. And a couple of coworkers commented on how, like, I really shined. Like, that was my mm. thing. Like, like as, as my boss said to me, my current boss, they're, they're like, that's your wheelhouse. Like, that's your thing. Um and so they, they didn't have a doubt that I was going to do a good job at it, which I was like, oh, nice. It's been a long time since I guess I've had that in a job. So it, I guess it's probably why it, um, it stood out to me. So, yeah, yeah that's, and um, it's been interesting. I became more active in the union. Um, I've been a member <clears throat> since I first got this job full time. And we went into contract negotiations a year ago, back in like uh, March of 22. And we had a full complement of representatives. And then over the course of a year, we basically lost, I think, three or four people on our side, you know, for various reasons, promotions. If they become salary management, they no longer remember the union. If they leave for another job, you know, outside of uh, the representation. So I, in May, ended up becoming a part of the negotiating team at the very end of the whole process. And so this year has been a big lesson, a lot in like the workings of 
government operations and some different stuff. In fact, tomorrow I'm going to be at a county council meeting because our county executive proposed their new budget for next year and they're eliminating seven positions uh, that are people that are represented by our union. So mm. we're showing up to be in support because we're sh- – because so uh, for those that don't know, because our, our structure may not be like everybody's. So we have in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, we have these things called home charters. And a home charter gives you the ability to create your own local government body. And so we have a county executive for the entire county. We also have a city mayor. Well, actually, we have more than one city mayor. Like Erie it, in and of itself has a city mayor. And then there, I think there's one or two other small, small – um, towns that have mayors. So county council is like the government body that kind of oversees the – kind of oversees the operations of county government. Okay. Um, and county government and city government are two totally different things. So the council um, is a group of individuals that actually run for those office positions and get elected. And it's a – it's a stipend p- type position that, but it's a part-time thing. Like you don't do it full time. So it's like, you have to have another job or be independently wealthy <laughs> to, to be on council. Um, and that was another thing like, there was a shakeup this year with the election. Uh, one person left. And so like the representation of the, of the people has changed. Anyways, long story short, they're doing a special meeting tomorrow because we're looking at the 2024 budget and this elimination of positions has really rattled and, Mm-hmm. Bothered a lot of people because they think it portends that our county executive is going to look to like go through countywide all the positions next year and do more eliminating. Mm. So what I got to spend this weekend doing was a lot of research, um, God bless publicly available information, and basically create spreadsheets showing all of the jobs that were created by the administration and the pay raises they gave. And these are all non-bargaining, meaning they're not union represented, Mm. which is sort of a way to say a a little bit, oh, but we have money to do this, Uh but you think we don't have money for this. Mm. Like, and we get less in pay raises than what you give yourselves. Things like that. So anyways, I, I've learned a lot this year um, from that insider perspective uh, yeah. about things and just how some things kind of get done or accomplished that way. So yeah, it's been it's been quite a bit. Um, I'll get into it when we get into the what's going on in, in another week or two, uh, a couple of weeks for the month of December. But uh, I also had a whole car journey. Recently. That's right. Yeah. So uh, I'll explain that one later because it's a doozy. Um, but yeah, that's been the thing. So yeah, it's been interesting. Oh, and I had a milestone birthday. Um, yes, you did. And, and it's so funny to kind of say it like that because years ago I was like, "Ooh, this one, this big birthday's coming up. I want to do this big thing." Well, that didn't happen. Um, COVID basically kind of derailed the whole thing because the world shut down. And I think it changes your priorities and your perspective on stuff. Yeah. Um, and so I was like, okay, I'll I'll change those plans to a future year. So I really took a took a um, I don't want to say a step back, but I really just kind of leaned back and relaxed a lot this year into not getting wound up about stuff mm. like I probably did in the past. So I've been trying to be a lot more calm. And hence, I didn't really make a big fuss about my birthday this year. Right. Um, which is okay. Mm-hmm. But it's an adjustment. <laughs> oh, the fact that, you're, that, you're, that you've hit that milestone? Yes. Yeah. Because, because now, like, when you fill out something, and, like, I did a survey for something recently, <laughs> and you have to pick your age bracket. Mm-hmm. You moved um, up one, huh? You're in a whole <laughs> new age <laughs> right, bracket. Right. Yep. Right, you move into a whole different. Well, you move into a whole new uh, decade, quote unquote. Um, and and I guess that's the thing that's been happening this past month is like coming to terms, like wrapping my brain around that I am now this age, right. where, like, I mean, I had a, I had a, I had a life crisis in college when I turned twenty, right. And so I've already been through the whole like anxiety coming out the other side and recognizing like the world is not going to come to an end and I'm not going to die. Um, you know, 
of a of a stress heart attack or whatever. So, and and none of that is is the case now. It's just very interesting to be like, I've spent so many decades not feeling my age. Like when I was in my twenties, I never felt like I was in my twenties. Always felt like I was in my thirties because I was always like ahead of myself. Mm-hmm. Like my maturity and how I looked at things. So then when I got into my thirties, I think I still felt like I was like not in my thirties. And then when I got into my forties, I thought I was sort of in my thirties still. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know what I am like, but, but I'm feeling more, I'm recognizing some things, not just like the changing of the color of my hair, my facial hair, um, which is kind of ironic because this past year people, there's been at least a dozen times people said something about my age and not being able to gauge how old I am and thinking I'm younger and I was always like pointing like to this and I was like, doesn't this give it away? I'm like, I, I, I see this in the mirror every day. It's very clearly a, a, like white, like well, it's going Gary, white. Gary, see my beard? You probably can't because the light is probably making it appear like the, no, I think it, I'm grayer it, than you are. <laughs> Well, we know that we're not going to look at Damon because black don't crack. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will. I will put the whole like. Damon will be the the forever young and pretty. Well, no, not forever. I will. I will. It's I that. Speak... It's that. It's the, he's a he's a walking talking oil of Olay commercial. Like whatever. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, I I but I am. For those that are wondering, you can't see them as much because it's clearly, you know, there's a lot more of the black hair. But I do have gray hairs. Mm -hmm. Oh, They're you just... have one or two gray hairs. No, oh. no. Yeah. But I will own that it is, um, I have a feeling slash theory. If it's related to your mother's father, for example... Um, I am going to, if I'm remembering correctly, because it's been so long, I wa I probably won't go gray. I will go white. White? Mm. Yeah. Um, so when it's, when it happens, you'll know. <laughs> like, um, In about 10 or I, 20 years. Who knows? Um, <laughs> And I do have a few, like, I, I keep doing this, but there, like, I know that there's a, like, you could probably, oh, no, you might not be able to see it. I can yeah, see I can it right see there. It. There's one. I can see one. it. Yeah. And then there's a couple actually over here, which yeah. fortunately are covered by my glasses. Yeah. Um, I don't have any gray hair in my head. It's just my beard. Yeah. My beard is practically completely gray. I'm very yeah. salt and pepper, but more salt mm -hmm. than pepper. Yeah. Um, but I am, like I said, I'm noticing them um, a little bit here and there, which is fine. Um, I've always looked younger um, than my age, um, which I'm appreciative of. Um, yeah. Like I had a, a, a acquaintance who I, I see semi-regularly that was like, I thought you were like in your 30s I was like oh you sweet lovely child uh, <laughs> thank you so much for that well he's older I mean, than me I mean you're not far like, from your 30s no I'm not that far but he getting he was farther thinking, every day <laughs> that's <Girl>. true but... <laughs> really okay fine facts facts <laughs> are facts bitch <laughs> <laughs> and that's a fact Jack um uh... <sighs> yeah, no. So I mean, I think that I think this year distinctly, twenty twenty three, probably because the milestone birthday has been a uh -huh. a year of recognizing the passage of time. Yeah. Um, I was just talking recently with somebody about the fact. Um, I saw a couple of people recently, and the, and by recently, I mean the past couple of months. I've learned of their parents, like one person, passing. Uh -huh. Um. And, you know, that this is this is what we adjust to is that the frequency the like that is a thing and how you can be younger and you may you may have, I guess, a blessing um, and that you may not have many of those experiences 
And so that becomes an adjustment um, in terms of, you know, like kind of like babies, weddings, funerals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those are all kind of things that you uh, adjust to, I guess, in that case. So, yeah, yeah, I think most of I think most of my family is beyond the wedding thing. And sort of the baby thing. I'm the oldest of the grandkids on both sides. They're all now adults. What's ironic is where I'm probably going to be entering a new era where like their kids are ha- going to be getting married and having kids, which mm-hmm. is just going to my damn brain. My um, my my nephew's uh, kids are having kids and are married. Obviously, so maybe not. Wow. So I. I had the revelation actually this past Thanksgiving. Um, my brother, I, I have other nieces and nephews from my brother that I don't have, a, I don't know. I'll put it like that. I've, mm-hmm. I've met them, but I don't know them. And we were in the car um, and he was talking about how they have kids. And I'm like, I just found out that they exist. Like, why? <laughs> like, I know you're older than me, but the fact that you have nieces and I have nieces and nephews that now also have kids. So I have grand nieces and mm-hmm. nephews essentially is like, Oh shit. I just, yeah. Yeah. And just a few years ago, I got it and got two nephews. <sighs> Step nephews. Brand nephews. Still nephews. No, just nephews. Ah, uh, yeah. So it'll be it'll be interesting to see where uh, things come in the the next year with 2024. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if y'all are aware of this. It may not be on your radar. Like usually when I get to the last quarter of the year, I'm already getting a, a new calendar for the coming year mm-hmm. and paying attention to things. Uh, for those that are out there, just as a random aside, next year's a leap year. Yes, it is. So February has 29 days. So mm-hmm. if you think everything's just going to be off by a day, you're screwed. Because the whole calendar next year is going to seem like a mess, and you're not going to understand where the hell anything is. Like, <laughs> right? Because <laughs> you're going to think it's all shifted it by a day. One more day of the my age of the forty three. Yeah, my um, mm, that's fair. My uh, the our officiant um, they got actually got married on um, leap year. Yeah, they, got, they actually got married in. They got they got married on February 29th, ninth, twenty twenty, literally before everything. Oh wow! Started shutting down. Down. Shut wow. down. It was it was crazy. Um, because you it was I, I remember us being at the ceremony. I remember us taking pictures and doing all that stuff, and um, having. I think the vaguest of knowledge of something going on, but not really fully knowing everything. Um, I feel like if anything, if, makes in, you get an extra payday or extra day of pay. I should say. Wow. I yes. didn't realize that there was a, that 2020 was a leap year. That just mm-hmm. goes to show how significant other things mm-hmm. were that year. Yeah. Cause I was just pulling up the calendar and looking and I was like, yeah, it did have 29 days. And then I'm looking and I'm like, and about two weeks later is when all hell started to break loose. Yeah. Um, yeah. In terms of like my, my, my new job, I hadn't even really learned yet. Um, I had the, um, in 2020, it was, because um, I, I, I was just read like Google, thank you, Google Photos for random memories, things like they pull about. Um, I was having, um, pictures of when I had the roof done that year, the first time. Um, and um, uh, that happened in um, April, mm-hmm. um, which was everything is, I had shut down. I had, I had stopped working and um, uh, having to like deal. That was the year I had to deal with. Like, I, I'm so glad I got, um, I think that was the year I got my bonus, and we also got the the well, yeah the stimulus check went to that roof. I'll put it like that. That's what happened mm-hmm. that year. That that entire stimulus check went to that roof. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. Um. So yeah, that's that's kind of the one. 
thing I know of like for next year that it has small significance is that it's going to be a leap year. Um, it'll be a national election uh-huh. um, in November. So that'll be a, a another significant part, at least of, of the U S culture here that we'll have uh-huh. in terms of that. But I don't necessarily have a whole lot planned for next year. I've got some work travel. I have a couple conferences I would like to go to. Uh-huh. Um, the one that I went to a couple of years ago that was in Chicago is actually going to be in Atlanta next year. Ah. Um, which I'm kind of interested to go because I've never been to Atlanta. Um, I've driven like past it, I think, but like never really seen the city or whatever. So I'm intrigued by that. Mm. But yeah. And, uh, there's going to be some things happening in Washington, D.C. I was going to try to go out to the West Coast for work for a conference, but I found out it's at the same time and something else is happening. Um, they're doing a statewide conference, and I think it's going to be right pretty much at the same time. And I was like, well, hell, uh, guess I'm not doing that. <laughs> that makes sense. We'll see how it, how it goes. I told my boss I was going to wait until after the first of the year to talk to them about travel for this coming year uh my grant we are covered through a half the year and we're waiting for the cdc to announce their financial opportunities so then the state can do something so we'll have a thing so in theory i only have a job for half a year to come um Mm -hmm. until we get a new grant process and all that kind of jazz so time will tell what that turns into but yeah so i'm just Feeling like this year there was some things. Um, I did go. I forgot about that. That was back way back in January. I went on an extended weekend away. And I actually reached out to someone recently and was like, hey, were you planning on doing that thing again? <laughs> <laughs> a, a whole group of people got together and rented a cabin, basically. Mm. Um, and went away. And it was nice. And so that was on my mind uh, about possibly doing that but yeah we'll see time will tell but yeah that's kind of it i mean i don't really have too many other things i'm thinking for in the coming year 2024 yeah now do we want to talk about what's happening next week we can uh before we wrap up so next week is episode uh 723 it's jingle mingle three oh three yeah, so it's our third time go-round where we just do like a fun uh, hour to get together with folks. Uh, the patrons are invited to be guests. Uh, I have yet to put everything together. Um, so, <laughs> but it's usually just like holiday silliness and kind of games things and, and uh, you know, stuff of that nature. It's It's ironic because in my part-time job, They've been doing holiday act styled activities every day. So they send out like crossword puzzles, word searches, like cryptograms, like all these kind of like stuff mm-hmm. to keep occupied. Yeah. Um, if you're not already like busy with work. So it, it's interesting to go through that. And this last one was a crossword and I got all but two words and I, I got fed up, so I didn't finish it. Um, <laughs> Well, because like the like I, I all right, I'm gonna admit I even went online and tried to cheat and like figure out if I could find the answers online. And it's a custom crossword. Like somebody had it like made it. And so that means they made the clues, which is why I'm having a problem because two of these clues just didn't make any sense. And I was like based on the way the letters lined up, and I was like, all right, fine, whatever. So and and the thing is like like apparently you're gonna get recognition or prizes. I don't know. <laughs> um, and the company already did the the annual bonus thing instead of doing a cash bonus for a couple of years. Now they've had like, here's your, here's your redemption code. And you go online and there's all these gifts to choose from like, you know, house items and for outdoor stuff and your home and your auto and all this uh. kind of stuff. So, um, yeah. So I just, uh, picked my gift, so to speak. Love for that. But yeah, so we check that out. that's a whole yeah. thing. So to speak. I, just, I just realized that's some other things. I this is my 20th anniversary at my company was last month officially. So, um, 
I got five extra PTO days this year. It actually happens the Ooh, year you, nice. you um, join. The year it happens is when it happens. So right. um, I remember back in February, I was like, oh, I have I have 30 days now. Why, what? Oh, right. and then, yeah, so that's been kind of fun. Um, got the congratulations and the anniversaries and all that stuff um, at work. Um, we're having our holiday um our team is having our holiday thing tomorrow as a matter of fact i had to um i brought down a sweater um because i know myself and i know in the morning i don't think about what i'm going to wear to work because i don't have to go anywhere for work right so i'm like let me grab a sweater so i have it already down here in the office so that when it actually gets to it i can be like oh and here (laughs) right (laughs) yeah we just did a potluck yeah, we did a potluck on Thursday this past Thursday. Yeah, we did a holiday potluck uh, department wide, all three floors, um, and it was a lot of food. Mm-hmm. Uh, I made a really good broccoli salad because um, I wanted something that was semi healthy, and it went over really well. No and then a lot of people. people. <laughs> Listen, I told people it was funny because everyone was super impressed by my my cooking skills, quote unquote. Like some people were like, wow, you're like a chef. And I'm like, no, I'm not a chef. Um, and, you know, how how well prepared I was like that. I like had a vessel and I bought ice and I put the salad in in another like container on top of the ice so that the salad would stay cold. Mm-hmm. And I had like real bacon crumbles on the side if people wanted to add that and, and put it on. And I had real slivered almonds. I say real. Anyways, as opposed to I was thinking about the bacon bits. Um, yeah. And and I didn't put the, the almonds in because I didn't want them to get soft. And if someone has a nut allergy, like and then I had printed copies of the recipe available because invariably people were like, what's the ingredients and how did you make it? Like. So I was telling people, I was like, when you do this shit for decades, you just kind of get, you just kind of know ahead of time, like how to prepare that. Mm-hmm. And it was ironic because, um, anyways, the salad was a big hit and it went rather well, but I told people rule number one, never bring to a potluck or a pitch in what you won't goddamn eat. Because if it doesn't get eaten, you're taking it home. home. Mm-hmm. So you better like it. Yep. That's, so that's why I made it because I was like, oh, at least it's something I know I'll eat. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we we had that we had that kind of shindig this past week, and then there's going to be a hot cocoa social this week yeah, for winter com- solstice. So our our building had a holiday thing on Tuesday, but it it was at the office and. Mm-hmm. Um, Jim was working in his office this week, so mm-hmm. I was not spending the thirty forty dollars to get an Uber over there, and then thirty four dollars to get an Uber back home. I was good. Yeah. So there's that. Anyway, so yes, next week, uh, back to the jingle mingle. We're gonna have. Uh, the live kind of goofy kind of gaming social people are welcome to wear holiday festive wear, grab a beverage of your choice, and just kind of hang out with us um, for some for some and silliness. I you know, it won't be live stream though, right? Uh, well, like your, uh, we were gonna do it like your birthday, so it'll be a Google Meet, and I believe it can be streamed because it'll that'll go into the YouTube feed, right? Um, I'm not sure if it's streamed, but it'll be uploaded. That's true. You might be right. It might not be live, live. So, we'll see. If you're we'll, not a we'll patron, the link you might not be able to, to see it right away, but we will share it. Yeah. Yes. So. Who knows what silliness will lurk in. Alrighty. Mm-hmm. Maybe forget- we'll get Damon to lick Santa's candy cane live on screen. <laughs> My God! <laughs> your eyes could have gotten any bigger than would have popped out of your head. That was funny. I'm like, you, you're, you're saying, you're saying me, but like, 
Jeff's the one with the huge Santa fetish. Right, but you're the one that married one. That's fair. In <laughs> any case... Unless Jeff has one tied up and, and, and hide somewhere that we don't know about, there is one in your house. So... <laughs> and he would actually be home because he doesn't have to show on Christmas Eve. Anyway, anyway. No. <laughs> Go Anyways, ahead, <laughs> I think that's the end. Yes. I'm trying to finish the show here. <laughs> Look, I made sure they're padded. Oh my god. Just perpetuating a joke. Anyways. Movies contact us, pop over to our website, comes online.com. Shoot us an email at comes online at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail at 361 Seal. We'll talk. That's 361 265 1855. You can follow us on Facebook, the platform, which is Twitter or X, however you want to call it, at comes out loud in the appropriate place of the URL, and right here on YouTube at comes out loud. Uh, you can join our entourage chat at bit.ly slash telegram dash col or subscribe to our Google Calendar to find out when we're recording these shows at bit.ly slash calendar dash col. We have various accoutrements such as a version one shirt, a version three shirt, or a flexibility for accessibility shirt, or many other different products. Over on his Azzle store, it's Azzle.com slash comes out loud. Some of those designs, such as the flexibility for accessibility shirt, were designed by Smashy. You can find more of his work at tpublic.com slash user slash Smashy the Bear. You can also become a patron at patreon.com slash comes out loud or send us a donation at paypal.me slash comes out loud. You can please rate us, review us on many of the podcasting platforms, such as Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify. You can find me anywhere in the internet as Box Hat Box, Bobby Box Cut Box, something or other, including Blue Sky. Damon? Um, if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me at Theater Cub 79. That's T H E A T R E C U B 79. Our most beer related sites are on Facebook. You can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. Or you can find me as Pup Umbra 79 on Blue Sky. Those are not safe for work. <laughs> If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gabriel73. And with that, say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Have a good one, y'all. Bye.